We begin with the race for Congress in the 4th District. There are two men vying for the Republican nomination to run against Congressman Gene Taylor. Several weeks ago, we had Joe Tejerdine here on the show. Today, we're joined by State Representative Stephen Palazzo, who is running for Congress as a Republican. Uh, Representative Palazzo, thanks for joining us on the show. We appreciate it. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I want to start by saying that I lost a gentleman's bet because of you. Uh, a few, you know, I heard the rumors about you running a few weeks ago, actually longer ago than that, but a couple weeks ago, I was talking with some of the Joe Tejerdine people, and they were insisting you were going to run. I said, I don't think he will in the final analysis. So I'm just curious about this career choice of yours. Right. Well, it, it definitely took um, a lot of uh, talking to friends and family. Um, you know, I was exploring it before uh, in late 2009, and it just it, it came to me in 2010 when we got to Jackson, realized that no matter how hard we work in Jackson, Mississippi, no matter how you know conservative we become or how you know, good uh, in limited government and the, you know, the things that we're doing, balancing our budget, it really doesn't matter as long as the federal government can continue to pass illegal, immoral, and unfunded mandates upon the citizens of Mississippi. You are still relatively young when it comes to the political arena. You're only in your third year as a state representative. So why jump from that into a congressional election? Right. Uh, well, first, I'm 40. So a lot of people think I look a little younger than that. I didn't get into politics until I was 36. I think I've accomplished a lot in my young, short life. You know, I've grew a business from scratch. I've served in my nation's military for 20 plus years. I'm a Marine um, veteran of the Persian Gulf War. I'm married. I've got three kids. I'm doing everything every other South Mississippian is doing. But I, what I've realized is that our country is not you're going in the right direction uh, and we have to stop that because I do think if we're, if we're not careful the federal government has gotten out of control it's bloated it's corrupt and if we don't stop it we're gonna wake up one day and we're gonna be spiritually and financially bankrupt yeah uh, you know you talk about things like limited government lower taxes strong national defense which has been a familiar theme really for the last year coming out of a group called the Tea Party right. movement and this Republican primary is kind of a microcosm of what is happening around the country <clears throat> because your Republican opponent, Joe Tejerdine, has the support of the Tea Party crowd here in South Mississippi. How is that going to impact this race? What can you do to try to appeal to that group? Well, you know, the, the one thing is I think I've got a great lineage in America. Um, my mother and my grandmother, both members of the Daughters of the American Revolution. They were, you know, I had family that was in Boston, or, you know, are, you know, been a part of America ever since the American Revolution. Um, the Tea Party has yet to endorse anybody. They re will not endorse. They may be garnering support from individual members. There's other groups that have been placing endorsements. But, you know, the qualifying deadline is not even until, you know, March 1st. Uh, I think that if they look at my resume and they look at my conservative accomplishments in, you know, since 2000. Have you been going to some of their meetings oh, over the last year? Absolutely. Have you spoken at any of their meetings? Oh, yes. Um, you know, I'm the author of the uh, Sovereignty Amendment for Mississippi, the Tenth Amendment Resolution. I've been in front of the 912 groups. In fact, they were really pushing me to run. And at the time, I had, too, you know, too many obligations, too many responsibilities, you know, getting ready for the legislative agenda coming up, uh, wrapping up clients that I have been, and been on extension since session from last year and I hadn't had the time to take a moment and think about it and again the reality came uh, in Jackson in this past you know January. Is there anything that is happening right now in the national scene where you see a Senator Evan by say I'm sick and tired of this I'm, I'm leaving I can't deal with the bickering anymore and you see the stalemates that take place in key issues like health care uh, jobs uh, that make you second guess yourself and say why do I want to get involved in this? No, I definitely don't second guess myself. I think it just makes me want to work harder because the one thing we're able to do in Jackson, even though sometimes, you know, the bitter um, bipartisan politics seems to be coming into Jackson, Mississippi, we can still walk across the aisle and get things done. You know, I'm a leader in the conservative coalition. I'm a leader in the Mississippi Sportsman's Caucus. Um, you know, there's, there's, we can reach out and touch Democrats. And see, that's what's important. You need somebody that can go up to D.C. and share South Mississippi values with other congressmen, you know, because a perfect example is this, the Obamacare. You know, it, was, it, it passed the, you know, the House by five votes. 
we couldn't reach out to at least 15, you know, and that's where I really wish Gene would have worked harder, is that he, could, he couldn't reach out to 15 Blue Dog Democrats and at least pick up five or six of them to vote to kill that. You know. Well, you mentioned Gene Taylor, and I always hate to talk about Gene Taylor when we have one of his opponents on because he's not here to defend himself, and it certainly isn't our job to defend himself, but I, I always ask Republicans this same question. Those of us who have watched Congressman Taylor's career over the years consider him a conservative, but all of, every, every two years, Republicans who are running against him and the supporters of those candidates always come out and say, well, if you really examine his record, you know, he's, he's just a, a liberal in, uh, in uh, sheep's clothing. What do you think about that? Do you think Gene Taylor's a conservative or a liberal? I, I, you know, I'm like a lot of people in South Mississippi. I think Gene Taylor's a good guy. It's just in the past year, you know, he hitched his wagon to Nancy Pelosi. Nan he basically threw the keys to the truck to Nancy Pelosi, and she's driving this country off the road. Um, and we think that's a little irresponsible. We also think that 21 years in Congress, um, you know, you should be getting a lot more done. But I, I'm, I, I agree with you. You know, he's not here to defend himself, and there'll be plenty of opportunity for him to defend his record later on. He's also been in Congress now for more than 20 years. Right. Uh, he is known across this district. Uh, it's going to take a lot of money and a lot of work on your part to even come close to, to getting to a 50%, 50% tie with him or getting one vote passed if you get to the, uh, the general election. Uh, how worried are you that because he has such great name recognition and because he is so well liked uh, that this is such an uphill battle it may not be uh, possible? Well, you know, what, what I've gotten, you know, we didn't jump into this, and I say me, my family, my friends, I've called all across the district and talked to community leaders, business leaders, and they say the same thing. Gene Taylor's a nice guy, but, and it's those buts, and the th I won't say the things that come after, um, that I think he's going to be vulnerable on. Um, the, the, but at the end of the day, it is, he put, you know, again, it's what we can say is I think he put politics before the principles of South Mississippians. With that one vote, we've had Obamacare. With that one vote, we've had cap and tax. But he so voted I'm, against both of those things. Again, I don't want to defend right. Gene Taylor. Oh, oh uh, yeah, absolutely. But, but he but, did, in but, fact, vote against both But of see, those. that doesn't really matter. Voted against we, TARP we, and we, voted we, against the stimulus. Yeah, but he voted for the automobile bailout. Okay. So it's, you know, it's you wouldn't big, have it's, voted for the automobile no, bailout? I don't, I don't believe any okay. business in America is too big to fail. I mean, there's nobody coming to bail out lawyers, CPAs, um, you know, small business news owners, money. automotive dealers, newspapers, yeah. farmers. Um, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. It's, it's big government. There's you know, it's gotten too big and too bloated. Um, but at the end of the day, I think um, uh, you know we're going to have a, we're going to give him a good run for his money. And the thing is, is you know, two things are going to happen. And we we very much think we're going to come out winning this election. Um, and, but if we don't, we hope to make him a better conservative congressman for South Mississippi. Uh, will you and Joe Tezerdine be meeting for any kind of debates? Have you have your people, if yeah. you have people, unless you're yeah. running kind of a one-man campaign here, uh, <laughs> talk to his guys and do you guys between now and the primary plan to get together at all and debate issues well, and it, appear before groups? Well, right, right now I'm focusing on my constituents from District 116. They sent me to Jackson to do a job for them, so hopefully we'll sign and die in the early days of April, but we are working behind the scenes. We do have a team together. We have volunteers coming on daily. Um, we're raising finance, you know, funds daily, and we consider an investment in South Mississippi. So you're not taking the primary for granted. I'm not taking anything for granted. No, you know, you know how it is. There's only two ways to run: a scared and unopposed. So we're running scared. You Even had though a, unopposed is better. <laughs> I apologize. You had a rather low-key announcement. You sort right. of did it on a radio station one day, and this is your first appearance down here in South Mississippi talking about it. Will you have a bigger? Announcement in the very near future? A absolutely, yes. We're, we're definitely planning on, you know, hitting uh, three or four counties, doing the public, getting the supporters to come out. And, and, you know, and again, I think there's a lot of people excited. But the, on the same token, they're excited about our race, but they're very angry with the course of, uh, you know, where our country's going. Will you appear on this show with Joe Tesher dying before the primary? Uh, uh, if we can work in our schedule, okay. I would right. absolutely okay. love that. So. Stephen Palazzo. A candidate for Congress on the Republican side. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All righty. When we come back, it's a familiar story. A casino in D'Iberville. We've heard it time and time and time again. But this time it's a casino on the east side of I-110. Will it happen? We'll talk with the mayor next. <laughs> 